We're back. We're always back. We keep coming back. Do you know that we're celebrating our fifth anniversary at the Toronto Snowmobile ATV and Power Sports Show this October? Isn't that cool? Five years on here. Five years of you guys yelling at me, telling me what to do and what I'm doing wrong. Five years of me telling you that I'm doing everything right. No, no, I, I'm just kidding. I uh, don't do a lot of things right. So make sure that you always refer to the owner's manual and I'm not a mechanic. I'm supposed to say that. All right. This is the Elan build. This is the chassis we're going to be using for the Elan just to make our lives so much simpler. These are the stock three pitch or three inch pitch drivers that come on this race chassis. And one thing I want to do right now is measure what kind of clearance I have between these drivers. So the track will be riding right on here, right? You have a close up on that, Jimmy? Yeah, see that right there? That's where the track rides on. These are your little extroverts that go through the holes in the track. Give you that extra little bit of uh, uh, track grab, if you will. But I need to measure from the top of that, not the top of the tunnel. Not like the highest point, basically, which would be actually that right there. That I need to measure from. You want to go to the lowest point because you've got to clear the coolers. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I want to go to the lowest point, the point that hangs down, or the highest point from the hair, if, if the tunnel's upside down. <laughs> and uh, that's where I want to make my measurement. I want to make sure that I can get three and, well, just about three and a half inches, not even. I'm going to have to poke my head down, Jamie. Watch a second. Okay, so right now, stock. What are those? That is the cooler. What a goofy cooler. Okay, so right now I've got two and a half inches clearance. Two and a half. And if we go to our track, it's a mess over here. This shouldn't be on camera. I'm kidding. It's all good. Yeah, that's three and a, well, I, that's three and a half inches from the bottom side of the track, three and a half. So I need to gain an inch. That's why we have these babies right here. These drivers are from Avid Products. Robbie sent me these, he's the big shot there. And they make a great product. What's really cool about these is that the way they're made, sometimes these aren't exactly round uh, and these are made just perfectly so that they do grab onto the track and uh, you get your best, kind of like, you know, I, I've bought these in the past, extrovert drivers aftermarket, and when the track is spinning, it goes boom, 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 boom. Yeah, something's not right, and it's those drivers. These are machined perfectly round, which is very cool. Um, so these are two, four, six, two, four, two, four, six, eight. These are six tooth drivers. Those are eight tooth. And those should press on. That's a big shaft. That's seven inches. Uh, that doesn't really matter. Uh, you're the round wheel part. Yeah. Just an eyeball, seven and a half. That's five and a half. Well, that'll give me my inch. That'll give me exactly an inch. I just don't know if that hole in the inside, I told them skidoo because I figured I was going to be using Skidoo components. I almost don't like the profile of that cooler. It's almost too high. You know, I think we might be all right. By the time the angle, because the angle is going to be coming off here almost like to that anyway, right? Yeah. Oh, and then what's it like at the front? Well, fuck. At the front, we got all kinds of room. We've got three inches already the way it is. Yeah, that's right. The track comes, it doesn't go... Well, it kind of does, actually. Well, until about halfway, right? You know, yeah, we're, it's two and a half inches. Just under two and a half. And how much is it for that rigid bar? Oh, you can't really tell. The rigid bar? The, the stabilizer. The That's not even close. It's like, no, this sticks out way more. I don't even think I need to, man. Like, honestly, I think once I put those drivers on, there's, there's going to be probably a quarter inch or more clearance. I think we'll be all right. Now, 
we kind of know what's going on with the tunnel. I am going to have to put an extension on it. This uh, Articat chassis, even on a good day, I think they run into cooling issues, especially if you take them out, uh, you know, you trail convert them. Um, they don't run very... Oh, I see. There's not even a... That isn't a cooler. Or is it? Up front. Up at the top. Oh, this is a... What? What the fuck? Is coolant actually flow through that little thing? It does. That's crazy. Um, yeah, very small coolers on this. And we're going to be running some big power, so we're going to have to maybe call our friends at Van Amberg, see if they can't build us something that's going to be a little bit better than that. I'm sure they can make a U-cooler. They'll fit inside there. And we're going to need something to extend this with. But I can't really figure out where that's going to be until I get the track figured out and installed, right? Which brings us to another issue, this uh, Easy Ride suspension, which is awesome, Easy Ride Carve. This is what we're dealing with here. Come on over and take a look at this. So this is meant for a sled with a 15 and a half inch tunnel. And ours is 14 inches. So pretty much from the outside here to outside here. So this has to be cut. These need to be replaced in here somewhere. Not sure where. And this rear shaft has to be cut as well. Same kind of deal done. Rear one's easy. This one, I don't like cutting up things that are already powder coated. I'll give Christian at Easy Ride a call. He's a great guy. And uh, they make the Easy Ride Hilo as well and a bunch of other things. Um, very easy to deal with. Maybe he can work something out. Um, maybe there's one on the production line right now that he can sort of cut up before it's powder coated and get it to me. These are just track, uh, I don't know, track protectors, keeps the track off of there when you're, when you get some track uh, slop, suspension crushes. I don't know what that is. I'll have to get a magnet and check it out. Might not that be that bad though. We can probably just zing that off. Not to, uh, these cross, uh, these uh, cross shafts are actually just uh, threaded and there's a sleeve put in there with a thread on it. This is pretty cool. Easy enough. And then after that, we got to figure out pogos. Pogos, no problemo. So that's it. I got to make some phone calls. I know what, uh, pretty much where everything needs to go. That's the next step. Just a little video there just to sort of show you the um, thought processes behind everything, some of the things you need to look at. Definitely we're going to need better cooling on this sled. And that's it. That's as far as we're going today with this. It's phone call time. Got to make some phone calls. And the other thing I'm going to do, we'll get into that a little bit later, is I'm going to check out the gear uh, gear ratio in the, um, the chain case. Make sure I can put bigger top end gears on her there because we're if these if this is geared like all other snowcross sleds, they're I don't know if they're about 2.5 to one kind of in there. They're really they got you know they got a lot of pep down low. They don't have a lot of top end speed. And then if we go with even a smaller driver on it, uh, it's gonna knock me down to about 40 miles an hour with about 200 horse pegged in behind it'll be kind of crazy it, it'll be a waste of uh, waste of power so we need to put a bigger top gear on that so i'll have to do a little bit of research on that too and that's going to be the next video maybe we'll talk to you about that as usual thanks for joining me here at power mods keep coming back the land build continues